Hi guys, I'm Exact Chaos and welcome back to another episode of Workers and Resources Soviet Republic. Um, I've been a little under the weather the last few days and so that's why there hasn't been um, any uh, regular uploads and so this is uh, the first in a bit. But I've also been giving it a fair bit of thought in terms of where uh, this series or any other series will go to. And while I absolutely love what we're doing here, the... The fact of the matter is I'm pretty keen to start working on the trash things and see how that works with gameplay. But this um, city will be way, or this republic will be way too difficult to really integrate, um, to really integrate the stuff, uh, the trash and the maintenance and, and all these new elements of the game in an appropriate way. We'll, we'll kind of kill, kill everybody if we do it. Um, so, unfortunately, well, I, I think I'm going to end it here for this series. Um, I will put the, the the map on Steam so that you can go and jump in and try and make any changes or improve on it. And so I thought as a last episode, what I'll quickly do for this series, I'll quickly kind of run through um, our various um, undertakings, kind of just a little bit of a tour of the Republic, if we will, if you will, um, and just talk through what, what we've kind of done. Um, I'm not going to jump in and fix any of the issues that's popping up. I'll just uh, just leave it there, basically. So we started over here at this Kioski border post, uh, and I do like um, the map that we played. Let's let's quickly open up the map. There's an awesome map. I can't remember its name, but it's definitely linked in the um, in the description. But I really like this map, and I was we I, I wanted us to really fill it up, and we were we're kind of making progress towards that. I think um, we would definitely want to do still wanted to do iron ore here and some bauxite in this area. So maybe another like a city over here, but it could have been could have been managed from this city. And then I thought we'd have an oil uh, oil city over here and a nuclear city in this area. At the very least, that was kind of going to be the plan. I absolutely loved the way we had these little islands. Um, just making giving you that little bit of an extra challenge in terms of building the infrastructure and getting these things to work together and our, our airport area there was awesome but anyway that that was kind of the plan and i absolutely love this map um now in the next series we will generate a map so we don't know where any of the kind of resources are so we'll just kind of start out somewhere in the middle and then and then see how we go from there so closing the map this is chaoski this is the first town a starter town it took us absolutely ages years and years to get this thing off the ground, um, building it from from foreign labor that we imported from from the border post over here, we started off our very first export of of clothing with some workers over here. I think we had um, numerous struggles and challenges. We have our oil heating facilities in this area. We started um, bringing in oil from from just over here, the moderate oil fields. And, uh, and we continued to expand. Then we started to build up uh, our construction industry. Our very first one, a small steel mill. Uh, we did some gravel over here. It's, it's actually a pretty nice little quarry that we've got going on. Um, we quickly ran out of gravel, ran out of steel. Um, we started, initially we started by importing via truck, both the iron ore and the, and the, uh, or the iron and the, um, and the coal. And then we decided, well, actually, let's uh, let's import iron ore instead and process it ourselves. We wanted to do the same for coal. And then we decided, no, let's do a proper mining area in the distance over there. So that's kind of how we've got this area to go. The, we, oh, one of the key things that we kind of, mist uh, that we made some mistakes on was the, the, um, the underground network, the, the water and sewage. So we, we started off by kind of giving people water and then, Sewage became a problem and water became more of a problem and, and it was a bit of a challenge and we have a lot of spaghetti over here to try and pipe spaghetti to try and make everything work. So there was a lot of lessons learned in terms of water water and uh, and sewage um, for these various facilities and in the future certainly do this a little bit neater and a little bit more systematic. But this area uh, gave us a lot to work on and we continue to expand into into Zaktograd from from this facility over here, but it was about this same time where we I think, think that we started doing um, expanding our oil production. We had this facility over here that's since been mothballed. Um, our a uh, small refinery over here that that uh, gave us a lot of um, exported bitumen, bitumen and uh, fuel to go. We had our very first power setups over here with oil as well. So this area um, helped us out a fair bit for quite a while. 
And then we obviously expanded into something a lot more substantial where, and we still, um, we're still doing a reasonable job with all of this, doing great, great work over here. We're, we're really doing that. And then we started, um, actually, I think we did this one first, didn't we? Uh, started off with a mine and a processing facility into a power plant because we really needed to expand our power. All at the same time doing our rail network. Now, it's a little messy in this area because uh, we kind of added some stuff onto it. But I still think it works, though. I don't think it's too bad in general. So we had our rail here. I thought we were really clever with this uh, this facility, with this little loop um, situation going into Zaktograd South over here. Um, and we have um, some various other pieces of infrastructure, continuous expansion. Um, we started running into trouble with a one way up uh, with with a two way operation here. And so we we brought in a bit of a one way system. Uh, we we expanded, we, we built our farms and expanded on them. And then we re we kind of realized we need way more than this. And so we built the major facility over here. This facility um, houses enormous amounts of crops because we bring it in by ship. And here, of course, we have an alcohol distillery and a food factory that uh, works pretty, pretty nonstop um, with, with, um, with workers that comes in from Zaktograd South, oh, or Zaktograd actually, to, to come and work here from the central area to come and work here. And it's been doing a reasonable job at feeding us, but it's probably at a point where that needs um, some major expansion or at least some additional workers to be able to do that. Uh, we then expanded into chemical production and we're using this huge chemical plant to try and just m make sure that we build a lot more chemicals. And so what we did is we expanded this area to also include plastics. Plastics and chemicals kind of go hand in hand. We didn't need much more than the chemicals we had here already to just do plastics also. And then we went into electronic um, components, which uh, needed a little few, a few other things, uh, actually only steel. So we just started bringing in some steel, but everything else was kind of here. And so then we had our electronics um, area here. I'm actually trying to do um, synthetic fertilizer in this area, um, but since we're going to stop at uh, this, we're, we're going we're gonna to end it there. Again, we had numerous issues with some of the rail networks over here. It just got too busy. To, to maintain um, all of this rail facilities. Not that this is a, a very busy, um, a very busy uh, ra uh, rail line. I mean, there's almost nothing it goes to down there. So really, it's probably sufficient. But we had a few instances where things got got stuck. We uh, decided that we also needed to do our self sufficiency on meat, and that's what this area was about. We initially wanted to move um, gravel from here to our our next area in Zaktograd. Um, but it, it was short-lived. We really couldn't couldn't supply that at a reasonable pace, and so we needed additional quarry facilities. But our meat production went really well, and I think we have a reasonable amount of meat available over here. And um, but we never really had a proper distribution network of that that really worked. Uh, this was a, oh, our first farm was over here. I now remember we had a farm in this area, and this is some remnants of the farm. This isn't doing anything. It's all been retired. Um, we still have a little food factory over here that we're using for exports predominantly. But yes, yeah, I like the idea that we've got these remnant old little factories that we've, we've not demolished. We just left them there. Similarly with the refinery and a few things, other things that we've gone through. But it, it's, it's kind of good because that's how I, I would imagine a little town like this would work. When you kind of really get to a point where these facilities don't work anymore, you go and build some new ones. Uh, expansion isn't always possible in these locations. And so I, I like this little remnant of what it used to be. Also, we oh, I remember now we had some issues. That's why we stopped clothing in this area. So clothing factories here have kind of stopped because uh, people were dying due to the pollution caused by the clothing factory. And so we moved clothing down here and, and we had, uh, I think this was always fabric. Or did we, I think we may have imported fabric for a while. Uh, oh, oh, this series we also did, very, uh, I, I liked my, um, my, my interchanges, and so this highway from the start was pretty good. And now, of course, we've got much better, um, like one lane roads that we can use to really um, improve what we're doing with interchanges. Even this, for instance, we can do a much better job with these kind of interchanges. We not, we didn't really, I mean, I remember we put our first traffic signals in here, but we never really, you know optimized our traffic signals as much. We've got a traffic signal operating over here um, and probably one or two other locations, but really barely any traffic signals in our cities. And, and we really don't need it. 
So then we expanded Zaktograd, and uh, one of the key things for Zaktograd's expansion was this enormous highway network that we uh, that we were busy planning. And I'll quickly open up the map again. So at that point, we were doing like the five-year plan uh, update or something, and we were saying, well, we do need to get to the to the west with the border there. And so we started planning out this alignment all the way over there. At that point, we kind of had a rough idea that we were going to do a city over here and maybe start looking at a big proper steel production. This area took so long to build, absolutely crazy amounts of time that that took. And at the same time, we then planned out our journey around that site. So we kind of said, this will be our spine and, and we'll spur off where we need to from there. That was kind of the, the intent. But anyway, we loved our interchanges, our bridges, lots of bridges, lots of construction. All of this, of course, still in the realistic mode. Took us a long time to build all of this. Um, we built uh, the heating plant over here uh, to to expand Zaktograd. And I loved our naming convention here with Zaktograd South, Central, North, and the construction complex and Zaktograd Airport and Zaktograd East over here. It kind of feels like a proper fully-sized city. And we still had some room to expand. I certainly had some plans to at least fully expand in this area and then maybe do a little something, maybe something industrial on that side. We still had some some room over here. Even, even on this side, I thought we could still do some industrial stuff here. And obviously, we, as we started expanding, oh, and I love these, um, these river crossings. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll move a little slower. Obviously, we had our rail connections in here, and I love these little brick, um, <clears throat> brick bridges that we have over here. Really cool. It's kind of what I feel like an old, old, old town or old city would look like. Um, we would have built close to the water because that's a lot of convenience for our people. Um, but then, of course, we needed the infrastructure and, and, and our walking distances became a problem because of that. So, of course, we built this over here. We try to do a little bit better with our, um, our general infrastructure, but we still didn't quite learn our lessons here. It's a little bit better here, I would say. Eating and uh, water and sewage is a little bit better, but it's still, uh, still a bit of a mess. Look at our, our, our neat eating systems over here. Fairly neat, at least. And then we started planning out our metro. So this is the very first metro that I've built in the game. Um, learned a fair bit around metro stuff, and I do wonder if we'll do a similar kind of thing in the future. But the idea with the metro was always for me that it is to be um, internal public transport. So uh, it took us a, a lot of time to get that metro built, but it, uh, it was a good learning experience. I wanted a, a nice big port facility in this area, and I wanted to maximize all of our rail connections through here. So you can see enormous amounts of rail that I've got through here. Always planned that we would run many trains through here, and ultimately it just got too busy too quickly. And so bypasses might be uh, a little bit more uh, appropriate in future, is kind of what I've learned. We did start... Um, dry docks over here and started building some ships for export and that i think um, helped us out a fair bit with 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 our with our cash flow then uh, we really needed as we started the planning of i'll quickly pop up there as we started the planning of uh, um, havoc road over here and havoc steel we needed um, some significant additional construction facilities and so we planned out this now I did a lot of the planning for this off camera because it really took me ages to thread the needle with all of these things. To have it so compact and confined took me ages of maneuvering the, um, the, uh, the, the conveyor systems and conveyor belts and things like that. But I think it ended up quite neat. But in the end, we never actually used the, the drop off for, um, um, uh, yeah, we really never used the drop off for, uh, for gravel um, because it just didn't work. But we did use it for, I think, coal, yeah? I think we did do, do that. So ultimately, I was kind of wondering whether it should have been a gravel pickup so that we can actually move gravel to some of our next indica uh, in areas. So when we figured out that gravel wasn't actually going to be um, easily, well, we wouldn't be able, we were not going to be able to supply enough gravel from the, um, from the other facility via train to, to this area, to keep this construction complex going, we decided, oh, we've got an awesome little area for a quarry. And I thought, I like this this uh, this quarry setup that we've got here. It really feels like um, like a proper like a like a proper quarry, a side of a mountain like this with multiple areas where they're digging stuff out. 
um, and then obviously delivering it um, over here. Obviously, there's no need for gravel at the moment, and so everybody's just kind of queuing up. But I like like the um, the modded one here where we're where we're actually um, have them all queued up like that. Now that we've got the single lane the roads, maybe that could um, work a little bit differently with some of the unmodded ones. So Zaktograd uh, north over here at a major expansion, and then we also dis discovered that actually maybe we need to. Um, to run a few more uh, um, accounting offices and so on so that we can get a little bit of a better view on our productivity and areas and our happiness and so on. And that's something that I'll definitely make a lot more use of in the future. Um, we ran out of um, out of educated citizens at some point while we were expanding here. And so we had multiple additional universities that we added to the area. But yeah, it was a, it was a good expansion. Then we started off, well, then we did our uh, prison industrial complex where we've got these major prisons over here and just running them into the power and heat plants here so that we're effectively using prison labor to, to um, work in these facilities. And I think that's a pretty good model. Uh, we just need to make sure that we, um, we're running that properly all the time and that we've got enough people here. So the addition of a, of a metro station down here allowed us to probably um, deal with uh, with our prison issues. We had some issues that we weren't actually, uh, we, people were coming out worse criminals than they went in, basically. Uh, this was the expansion of our uh, of our road network towards the west and towards Havakorot in that area. But at this stage, we also built this major bridge, and I was super happy with it. It's just like a, a major piece of infrastructure that you would kind of think um, is the kind of project that you would see in a, in a, in a Soviet Republic such as this, um, where, uh, and, and, and if you look at the map, I, I, I always thought that was ev effectively the best place for that major bridge infrastructure because it's literally the narrowest section of the river um, and we can go pretty high um, so that sh we can still do proper shipping underneath there. If we didn't do it here, we needed to potentially jump multiple, um, multiple islands. So if I... Um, had a look at this. So, I mean, nowhere did we find, I mean, we could do that, but that would effectively cost us multiple bridges to get to the other side. So we just thought a major piece of infrastructure here. And initially we were planning to run the rail down this side, but then you guys convinced me that tunnels is the right thing to do. And this was the tunnel that the, for the first time ever, we used the tunnel bore machine. Um, and it tunneled through here pretty quickly. All of this infrastructure took a lot of time to build, of course. But we did it. We did it all in realistic mode and we planned it all out. Lots of rail connections. I don't think we've ever actually used um, this network that we built so painstakingly all the way this way. I mean, we've got additional facility that's, that's on hold at the moment all the way to this area. And at some point we decided, ah, maybe let's expand here, get a little town going so that we can really start from this side as well. And I think if I do play a realistic mode again in the future, um, small towns on multiple borders all happening at the same time is probably the way I will do it so that we can move through things a little bit quicker and then build towards the center. But anyway, we never really properly utilized this part of this part of the map. I wanted, I still wanted to do a fair bit along the river into the nuclear area and into that there. Also planned out to have some other mines here, coal and iron mines available in this area as well so that we could potentially run that to to our steel facilities all the way on the other side of the map. But anyway, that was just a, a bit of a dream um, for one day. This is ultimately so difficult to build um, in realistic mode. or it takes, it, It's not so difficult. It just takes a long time. We had the Zaktograd airport that we started building, and we also had allocated tourists, right? We brought in, initially into Kajowski, we've got one little hotel over here, that one there. And that was our initial tourist industry, just a little bus that ran to the border and back. Uh, then we expanded that with Zaktograd South with a slightly larger tourist area here and we started bringing people in by train, again still from the Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet border. And, um, and then when we eventually opened up the airport and we also always wanted to use the air airplane production facility here and build and sell airplanes or export airplanes for some good funding. Um, but when we opened up the airport here, we started bringing in tourists from the west via plane um, and we built our little tourist cluster in this area. Very nice, actually. And and all of this money, we're not exporting anything um, to the West, but tourism is giving us all of that $5 million there is all generated by this little tourism cluster here. 
So it's a pretty good uh, source of income considering it only uses, um, you, know, be, uh, you know, a little bit of labor and, um, and, uh, and some food and, and alcohol and electronics and the likes. And I think they even pay for that. That's part of the money there. Um, we decided that this area here is awesome for a bit of a gateway into Zaktograd. So as you would cross, um, cross over the bridge, this enormous infrastructure that we're so very proud of, um, a lot of labor went into it. You, you have the, the tribute to our labor over there and uh, a tribute to the motherland that has given us this, this proper land to be built on. So that was kind of just, uh, just trying to be a little bit more thematic around how a city like this would actually include things like, um, like statues and the likes. We also um, had one, I remember, this was our first one over here. We thought this area here was a pretty good, it could be like a little park, and I think it is. Um, in our next playthrough, I'm definitely going to do a little bit more in terms of um, just doing a little bit more in terms of the aesthetics. Like, we never actually got into doing proper aesthetics. Like, um, some of these areas need trees, some of them need some pavement and, and, and some plazas and squares and things like that. Um, some fences and the likes around a few of these facilities would be good. Um, a park like this probably wouldn't have a fence, but but maybe there's a little bit of a terrace around here or, or a fence around that area or a little plaza in, in, in here as well. Something like that, just so, so that we can see that. But the idea was, of course, that as people cross this bridge, which at that stage was our biggest bridge, right? When we built this, this was our biggest bridge. And so we had this where people can say, oh, my goodness, look at this. Uh, what was this statue called? Um, defense of the Motherland Monument, basically. Anyway, so uh, just was a, a good little monument that could uh, be looked at from, from the bridge over here. So that was something that was pretty cool. We, all of, the, all of the time, expanded. We effectively tapped out this entire oil field to feed into this area, and we had numerous issues with it. We also had a number of buildings that actually burned down over time. So that's definitely something that's, um, that's been a constant challenge for us. So, um, and of course, we dealt with winter a lot and uh, slowed things down even more. Beyond realistic mode, it slowed things down even more. So we had this facility over here that we really started producing huge amounts of fuel and bitumen that we could export. And we everywhere had to build technical um, service offices. None of this is actually, um, actually has water infrastructure here, uh, water and sewage. We needed to bring that in with um, technical services vehicles. We also, um, for the first time in a playthrough, decided well, actually we need to connect up all of our border posts, and so we started doing that. Um, and then we started building some rail from our from the various ones. So that was what I was in the in the process of doing is actually just linking up all of our border posts, um, whether that be with gravel roads or or, or 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 asphalt roads. But that was really the plan, just to make sure that there's a proper network of connected infrastructure. And we eventually finished off the rail all the way here to Molka. Um, yes, so we also then started our spur off into this area from a number of areas, actually. Sorry, I'm going to just do this. So a spur of this line goes to the west. This line also goes to the west, but it also goes to have a garage here. And, and then we planned out this area. We had an idea for an enormous steel facility, which I'm pretty proud of, to be honest. There's still two more steel mills that need to be built but we're barely scratching the surface in terms of the productivity that this area can bring. And the idea was this will provide steel for the entire nation and it would export steel as well, or at least do mechanical components from there or some planning that we've got there. I decided on a central train station for Avogarod so that we could um, really maximize um, people, moving people to that area. Ultimately, I kind of wondered about a tram across here for quite a while, but a tram I don't think would have ever been able to, to, to service these kind of steel mills. I mean, this is 500 per, per steel mill. So ultimately, this would take about 2,000 workers at a time. So we needed to be able to bring enormous trains in here to do that. And so this was what this was about, um, only running trains back and forth. So we would have at some point replaced these trains with, with longer custom trains, not, just, not the normal train sets, as we expanded this area, and I still wanted to do plenty of more housing. Not This housing isn't even filled up. But so this, this town would have at least gone up to 10, 15,000 people to be able to feed, feed this area, because there's multiple kind of shifts of 2,000 workers in this area. So at least 10, 10 to 15,000 would have, would have been required. 
And I also wanted us to um, go down here and do bauxite mining in this area, also from that town, and potentially over here do the iron ore. But I wasn't quite sure how we were going to do that just yet. But anyway, that was kind of the, the plan um, for this area. And that is kind of where we then finish things off. So um, we haven't even properly set up distribution here. There's some distribution availability. We still needed to bring in um, some some fuel and, um, and, and bitumen and the likes of whatever we may need. We don't have gravel in this area. I wanted to do a little bit of construction from this area as well. It's just more, e it's just easier to build when your construction offices are close by and so on. So that kind of is where we've, we've got it. Um, the map being the kind of height that it is, we've got a fire over here, right? Yeah, here comes the fire trucks. Um, the map being the height it is, right? So if I go into this view, um, we could see that this height level here, actually, I probably need to have a look at it over here. The height level over here was 65 meters. So we couldn't get the, the normal trick of, um, firefighting helicopters to really work in this area unless we kind of built a major crater hole like this. Um, and and so in, in the next map, it'll probably be less of a problem because the next next map will be a, a, a generated map. Um, so we won't actually know, but it, it'll probably not have um, such a significant height profile over large areas that we can build in. It'll have little hills and things typically, but, but I think other than that, it's going to be fine. And so really, that is kind of where we, we, we ended it up. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do in the next, uh, in the next playthrough. I'll open up the map. Um, not that we're going to play this map, but just so I can kind of talk about what, we're, what our intent is with the next playthrough. So we'll do a custom or generated map. So we'll, we'll, we'll generate um, a map um, with, a, with, a, with a map generator. So it will be uh, much more plain than this one. We will definitely have some rivers because I definitely want to use shipping exports um, as much as I can, probably. And um, and what I will do, because we won't have a, a clue as to where or our various resources are until we, we, um, we research them, and I am going to play with research, um, we will try and do it slightly centrally. I'm not going to play realistic mode. But it's going to be a bit of a hybrid in the sense that I'm going to start it off with things like Insta build. I'm not going to kind of Insta buy goods within um, within like distribution facilities and things like that. We are going to move all of our stuff around with distribution offices and 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 buy it at the border and and things like that. I do want traffic on the road network or and 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 on the rail network to be able to. So I, I'm going to do a realistic playthrough, but we're going to do a little bit of insta build at the start so that we don't take as many years to kind of just get a foothold in, 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 the, um, in the place. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to push our first city in a little bit. I'm going to try and get something a little bit more central. It doesn't have to be right in the middle, but a little bit more central. Um, and from the start, I'm going to insta build at least one road that kind of cuts across the entire map. However the map looks, we're going to have one road that cuts across from the start and we're going to insta-build it, um, an asphalt road, so that we do have um, access to both sides from the start and we have a road network that we can use and that we can fill up with vehicles. We might just do a single carriageway and then double it up as we grow um, and we can potentially build that ourselves with our own with our own um, construction offices and the likes, but that's generally what we're going to do. Um, we're going to start it off with um, a lot more natural facilities, so probably we're going to start it off with food production. So it's pretty easy for us to do to do that, and we'll obviously need to use um, our compost, our waste. We'll have to manage our waste and see how exactly we do that. We'll have to fertilize our fields, and we'll we'll start it off with things like food, and then maybe into clothing production, fabric and clothing production. Um, to see, see uh, about getting us um, self-sufficient as, as we as we sl we slowly get ourselves self-sufficient. We're going to still play with money, but I might start um, with a bit more because I'm going to like insta build that first road and and insta build a few, a few a, our first town and, and stuff like that so that we can just get things moving a little quicker. The other thing that I'm not going to play with is is seasons. I'm going to remove seasons, so we're going to say our new republic is going to be in a much more temperate climate. We're not going to see snow. And we're going to have all year round um, areas where we don't need snow and we don't need heating. Heating is, well, while we've, I wouldn't say I've mastered heating, we've played with heating a lot and we've, we've learned the challenges of heating 
the 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 pros and the cons, the pollution versus the versus the distance versus you know the 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 massive constraints that it places on your city sizes um, without building much more of these kind of heating plants. So we're going to stop that. We're not going to do that any further. We are going to play with with maintenance. We're going to play with. Um, sewage and water infrastructure. Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've done over here. We've learned our lessons here and we've done slightly better with regards to just planning out our our water network. So the way we've done it here with the multiple pumps that split off with like a main line that then splits off was a much better way of doing it. And and similarly we've done the same thing with the with the with the sewage. And we've done an even better job. Let's go over to Havagorod. We've done an even better job over here. So slowly we've done We've gotten better and better at, at this. And here we're actually using our natural, oops, that's not the one, our natural um, slope here to kind of have our water use gravity to go down this way and feed all of our facilities. And then similarly, we use that same slope to, to feed our, our sewage out this way. And so this is a much neater water and sewage network. Still maybe not perfect, but a much neater one at least. So that's, uh, that's definitely something that we're going to have a look at. We're still going to play with water and sewage. Um, we're still going to play, we're definitely going to play trash and maintenance. That's kind of the primary reason is to try and figure out how that works. We're going to play with, uh, with, uh, with obviously fertility on the fields. I don't think you can even switch that off, but we're going to play with that. But at least we'll have all year round, I think we'll have crops and the like. So we'll see about doing a lot more self-sufficient crop farming, um, try and get it nice and fertilized and then try and manage um, the the waste and the maintenance in a, in a way that that kind of works and makes sense and and we learn from it and we're going to try and do and fill up our map and and do all of the various things we're definitely going to want to get self sufficient as quickly as possible but um, as, when we have a sufficient um, kind of construction industries we will continue to then build up our our areas by ourselves using our own workforce and our own um, construction materials. Um, but in the st in the start, uh, we're we'll, we'll, we'll definitely going to instabilize a few things just to make sure that we we move along um, pretty quickly and we don't get too tedious. So I hope that uh, that will improve the pace of the game a lot more, and um, and um, and then th and that'll make for enjoyable content. Probably going to be similar length episodes, but maybe a little shorter, maybe forty five minutes instead. But something like that is kind of what I'm what I'm aiming for at the moment. And so yes. That is going to be the end of this series, guys. So as I said, I'm going to pop this map on the Steam Workshop um, and I'll probably have the link in the description of the video or at least in the comments below. And uh, and then from there, you can go and uh, load this up and see if you want to want to move that a little bit further. What is going on over here? Uh, start or end building is not connected with a road. Oh, that's an interesting little problem. We have here i had no idea there's an issue there but anyway uh, i'm not going to worry about that you'll have to deal with that if you uh, load up this map and see what that issue actually was so there we go that is it there's still plenty that we could have done but we're already in the year 2004 it took us so long to get here that's why i really want us to speed things up in the next in the next one also if we're as we're playing with trash we may find that um things go horribly wrong and we need to quickly insta build a little trash facility just to make sure people don't die or leave or something like that so that's definitely something that we're gonna face in the future but anyway guys this is the end of this republic um i'm definitely I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm not gonna revisit it in the future um but you're welcome to and you're welcome to give it a shot and let me know how you've gone with it in the comments Okay, thank you so much for uh, watching this series along with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you've done, if you have enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. We will continue to play Workers and Resources. It's my absolute favorite game. Um, I also see City Skylines 2 is coming out in the not too distant future. We'll definitely give that a shot um, on the channel as, as that comes out. Um, but definitely very keen on, on these kind of city builder games, especially the more functional ones. And we'll see about um, going back into some other stuff as well over the course of, um, of the rest of the year, depending on, on the workload, really. Uh, yes, so hit that button, like that like button, um, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next series. Bye-bye.